In the foregoing session, we have entered the control logic for the ZIM FU10 function block diagram. As ZIM FU21 is very similar, we don't want to repeat this, but instead use the import export feature of the control builder F. Before this session, we have exported the function block diagrams. To avoid collision of tag names, we delete the programs ZIM FU21 and ZIM LB10. Now we import them into the project. Therefore, we perform the edit import block menu command and select the corresponding files. The imported function blocks appear under the pool node. Select both and drag them to the desired position below the simulation task. If you check the project, you will get a lot of error messages since the imported variables are not allocated to a process station. We have to allocate the imported variables manually. As we see in the resource column, there are some variables without allocation. If there are more consecutive variables to be assigned, select the lines and perform the assignment. When you check the project again, you see no errors. As the SIM task is ready, we focus on the inlet pipe. As first step, we enter the control logic for the pump NP10. Open the NP10 diagram. You see that it already contains an IDF1 block named NP10, which is an individual drive function for unidirectional drives. You can find it under Blocks Open Loop Control. Some inputs are already connected. The feedback inputs get their values from the ZIM FU10 block, as you can see from the cross-reference list. Safety intervention is controlled via the input terminals PR0 and PR1, where PR stands for protection. Those inputs act also directly to the OUT terminal. PR0 has higher priority than PR1. We connected PR0 to the limit value higher than MAX2 of the tank B10. This is the reason why NP10 is switched off when the tank level is higher than MAX2. LOC is the terminal for local intervention. If this signal is true, the control element is in local operation. Open the parameter window of NP10 by double-clicking the function block. We have specified the name, short text, long text and status. The parameter window has a second page. Here you can set priorities for alarms of certain events. You also can type in a message text or a hint text, which can be displayed in Digivis. If you click the hint checkbox, a dialog opens where you can specify three lines of text and an alarm sound. The fault type, for example, belongs to fault input terminal of the function block. It influences directly the control command, which is set by the OUT terminal. The fault input is fed by the NP10 FLT signal, which is written by the simulating block ZIM FU10, as we have seen in an earlier session. Furthermore, the OUT terminal is connected to a write variable named NP10 underscore OUT. For more information about the IDF block, use the online help. What's missing up to now is the input. We want to implement the following behavior. When the pump is in automatic mode, it shall run as long as the tank level is not higher than max 1, which is set to 6 meters. If the level max 1 is exceeded, the pump shall be switched off and stay off until the level is lower than min 1, which is set to 3 meters. This behavior can be achieved with an RS flip-flop. The functionality is described in the online help. Let's enter the flip-flop block. 
position the block and name it np10 underscore ff. A long terminal line indicates that this terminal must be connected, while the short ones are optional terminals. Connect the flip-flops output to the NP10 input. Now we connect the R input to LIC SL2, which is the higher than MUX1 signal, and the S input to LIC SL3, which is the less than MIN1 signal. It is very easy to check the logic's correctness. The limit values are supplied by the tank B10 function diagram, as you can see in the cross-reference list. If we open the tank B10 function block diagram, we can take away the L10 process value and insert a new test variable instead. All limit values are false, as this level is within the normal operation. Let's raise the value to 6.1 meters. Now SL2 switches to true. Consequently, the output of the flip-flop is false and the NP10 is switched off. If we enter a normal operation value, say 3.5 meters, both flip-flop inputs are zero, which means no change. If we now change the variable to a value below min1, say 2.9 meters, you see that the pump NP10 is switched on again. This is exactly what we wanted to achieve. So NP10 is ready now, but before we leave the diagram, we should restore the original state and exchange the test variable by L10. In this session, we learned how to import function blocks, how to perform the resource allocation in the variable list, how to configure a unidirectional drive function block, how to find the source of variables via cross-reference information and how to get additional information via online help.